appreciate you. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, in the month of May, towards the end of the month of May, church will be celebrating our 24 years anniversary um, in, by April 22nd. I want you to, let's break the Facebook, 22nd of April, this church marks 24 years. And by ending of April, a month from that time, we're having our 24th Word Explosion Conference. And we'll be followed, that week will be followed by Power Week, Prayer Power Week of five days of all night and 30 hours with God. And after then, we'll have a community service. We intend to reach about 2,400 people with free medical treatment and give them food. Hallelujah. As a way of saying, giving back to our community, that is part of our core value of House on the Rock, what we truly represent. Hallelujah. Uh, prayer is building. There's a revival already. If you're not part of it, um, I don't know where you should be, but on Tuesday. Um, this is week five. We built it up first week. We call the place the place of power and the hour of prayer. Hallelujah. We started 45 minutes in tongues and built it up to 55 minutes in tongues. And we have built it consistently for three Wednesdays, for three Tuesdays, praying in tongues for one hour. One day we'll move one hour, 10 minutes, 15. We'll push it that way. And there's a revival. What an atmosphere last Tuesday. What an atmosphere. If you, uh, you are in the city and you want to have a feel of revival, you can come and, and have an awesome time in the very presence of the Almighty God. Uh, for people who are having their bed days this week, we have Pastor Samaila Yahya. Let's celebrate him. It's his bed day. And Mrs. Jemima Olufade, our bed day. Mrs. Zachariah's son was this week, his birthday. Uh, all the people who celebrated their birthday this week, we celebrate you. I pray that my God, the God of my apostolic fathers, Bishop Jakes, Pastor Paul, would bless you with the things that money can buy and the things that money cannot buy. Your best days are not behind you. They are in front of you. But will never remain the same again in Jesus' victorious matchless name we have prayed. Um... Pastor Demeji Omotara, I didn't get the information very well. Is Omotara? Demeji Omotara, where you are in this building? Pastor Demeji, yeah, our head tribe, please come. He has a testimony, and uh, he's going to testify to the glory of God. While he's coming, hallelujah. I had a piece of paper here. Okay. I had a piece of paper here. Ask the rock media guys, please. I had a piece of paper here. Uh, okay. Good morning, church. Uh, I want to thank you, sir, for the great opportunity. The reason why I'm thanking him is because I just came into church and I boxed him, I boxed Reverend to a corner. Um, the service, um, order of service has already been written. Thank you, sir. Um, I wanted to share this testimony to encourage someone um, this morning. Um, this year has been a um, honey sweet experience for me, as um, <laughs> Reverend prophesied. I want to thank God because I've had so many rough years, and I just believe that God has been building me um, to come to this point in my life so many pains and so many struggles um, in different areas of my life. But I thank God that this year has been a honey sweet experience. People have shown me uncommon kindness. And, and I started seeing the sign um, at the beginning of the year. Um, one of the remarkable, I, wanna, I don't want to take our time, it's Sometimes these little things, I remember when uh, Mrs. Freddie came last time and she said that we should learn to thank God for the little things that uh, we sometimes we just overlook. Um, on Sunday, um, fortunately, we, it was at our birthday. We just went to um, rally around her, gather around her, and just thank God with her and appreciate God with her. And we party very well. While, while we were partying, some people were 
you know, doing their own side of the, <laughs> on the other side. Uh, where I parked my car, I just came out after all the party and all the fun fair, and then found out that um, my battery had gone. Now I've had, <laughs> so the history of car battery for me has been, I've gone from one battery to the other, sometimes it didn't even last for six months, and so this time I took my time and I said I wanted to get a good battery, I don't want any problem, and then this battery is now up to a month, and then I just got to my car and it was stolen. And so, so on that, that, that happened last Sunday in the evening. So on Monday, I, I, I went to the office, I took public transport to the office, and then I went to see my battery charger, or the person that normally gets me battery. And I told him I needed a battery, but I didn't plan for this. Though, so you're going to structure a payment for me. Shortly before I got there, I got a call from somebody. I had called him earlier on to tell him to structure something for me. So just somebody just called me and said, sir, which battery type do you use? What's the uh, capacity of your, the battery for your car? And then I, I told him, I said 75 amps. And I went to my battery man and I told him, I said, ah, did you give, give the person that you were supposed to buy battery for from um, my number to call me? And he said, no. So anyway, I continued my discussion with him and then we structured the payment. And he told me, sir, the way the atmosphere is right now in this time, you have to pay, make all the payments in one week. I said at this time, 53,000 just in one week like that. I, I said, okay, please just, just look at it. And then I left. And then this same person called me back again and said, sir, um, where are you now? I've been asked to bring a brand new battery to you. Um, from where? Um, I was confused. And so I said, okay, I live in refinery quarters and you'd um, bring, you bring it. So the reason why I said that is that I'm surprised. I'm like, ah, who, what, what's happening? So I got home. Naturally, I'm not used to this kind of thing. I'm always the person giving out, giving out. So it's very difficult for me when people, and sometimes emotional for me when somebody stretches their hands of, um, um, you know, that favor towards me. So I got home. I didn't say anything to anybody because I didn't believe it. The next day in the morning, later in the evening, the guy called me and said, Sir, I'm in a church now. Um, can you allow me to bring it tomorrow? I was still like, am I dreaming? Uh, so the next day in the morning, the guy called me and said, Sir, I'm on my way. I said, you're on your way to where? He said, to your house, sir. I said, okay. He came into the quarters, called me, and lo and behold, I went to where he was, he was because he couldn't locate my house, and then the next thing I saw was, something behind his bike. And then he came to my house, directed him, he came to my house, and then he got to my house, and then brought out a brand new battery. I was surprised. And then fixed it on the empty space, and <laughs> I had to go and start my car, so that I'll be sure that <laughs> this is not a scam or a fraud. You know, and I just want to thank God. And something that would have cost me so much money. And um, earlier this year, I wanted to travel to Abuja. I was just stepping out of the quarters in the morning. Um, and I was still contemplating, Let me, should I go to the train station or should I go and take public transport? So, I'm sorry, um, road um, uh, go by car. And as I was stepping out, something said, okay, just go by, just go and go to, uh, what do you call it, um, command and just take a car. That train station is still far off and this thing. And then I remembered, ah, train, train, train. Okay, the schedule may not, be, may not be favorable. So as I was just coming out of the quarters, a friend of mine, an old student of mine, just passed through. He saw me with the bag. He said, oh, God, where are you going to? I said, ah, I'm traveling. I'm going to Abuja. He said, I'm, I'm not. I'm leaving town. He said, to where? Uh, no, I said I was traveling. He said, to where? I said, Abuja. Uh, he said, next thing he said, come inside, Oga. Oh, I was like, come inside. He said, Oga, oh, come inside. I didn't intend to travel with my car, but now I want to travel with my car because I actually wanted to go by public transport. He said, but I needed somebody to go with me. He took me to his house. Just at, the, at that moment, it didn't take him more than five minutes. He took his bag, put it in the car, and then we drove. Free ride to Abuja, AC. Every, uh, so, and then there is, I expected some fun for a particular, um, I have these um, obligations sometimes quarterly um, in my organization, and then some other petty needs like that. And I, 
I was just believing God for funds and because my business had um, not been um, uh, doing well as I expected. And so before I knew it, somebody just called me and said, ah, I owe you so, so, so amount of money. This is, it's been long. Uh, I, I had forgotten. And then he said, ah, send me your account number. I said, my account number. I said, company or personal? It's a personal account number. I said, okay. I sent him the account number and then view. It was a download. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I, 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 this is my first time sharing a testimony. People won't believe it. I normally share my testimony in smaller groups. But as I was walking into this place this morning, God reminded me of what Mrs. Freddie said that day that don't take for granted those little things. You have a honey sweet experience this year. Somebody needs to be encouraged. Somebody needs to be encouraged. Did you receive it? Somebody clap your hands and give God a shout. Now stand up, judge. Stand up, judge. Stand up, just stretch your hands in 120 seconds. Can you stretch your hands and pray for your uh, God's servant? That that which God has started, God will perfect. Lebo ho shite pe hega daga dibro ho tolo. Mande bele grodu zele bre he kretika pala duga baya. Improdobo sidi bre ente pele ligri he gredia. Rubraga do se premente celebre diga bablu guru sidi. Ante pele digro ho kroga do sidi. Le mande pele diga bablu do bodu se premente kaparadia. Le tapalo ro bodu se premente sidi. Le mande pele diga bablu do se premente pele diga badaya. I proto sele bahata. Father, we call you Father because Father is not far from his children. You have started this. Now perfect it. The part of the jersey is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day. Mark your son for distinction and continue to do for him what only you can do. For us, we, we vow not to touch the glory. We give you praise and we'll bless you, our Father. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Before we go straight into the word this morning, uh, Pastor Ralph Gospel has uh, something that will benefit us. I think his company, they are going to train about 50,000 people. I don't know. Um, and it's tech. So if you're doing nothing, if you're a tech person, you need to hear from the horse's mouth. Pastor Ralph, please come. Good morning, church. So briefly, I'll just say this. Um, I work for a company, Grace of Technologies, and no, it's not a music company, it's a tech company. <laughs> okay, so our vision, our mission at Grace of is to um, help people leverage technology to improve their lives, and the mission is to, and the vision is to, is an increased access to digital opportunities. This is because um, we live in a world where, as currently, people work remote. From, from where I work, there are people who work jobs in Canada, US, UK, you know, and all of that, and usually technology-driven jobs. We see technology as an enabler of sectors and not a sector on its own. And that's why you have things like agri, agri tech, you know, ed, ed tech, health tech, and all of that. So in whatever sector it is, you know, technology is the underlying factor that gives you that efficiency. And that's why we encourage a lot of people to take these technology skills and just plug into the opportunities of the digital age. And in following that mission, we have partnered with the state government, with Kaduna State Government, to organize a program called Tech for All Kaduna. Usually, these trainings in Grace Off will cost anywhere from 100,000 to 150,000, but we are doing a remarkable thing. It's a one time offer to train 50,000 people in Kaduna for 10,000 naira. Yes. And, and so we're doing, that, we're, we're doing that so that most people can, can have access to these skills. And they are, we have carefully selected in-demand skills, like front-end web development, back-end web development, product design, and data analysis, um, analytics, right? And so this, in these four trainings, they are going to happen virtually, of course. And, and um, people who are handling this, having these trainings will also have weekly access to mentors in this field who will review what they're learning with them and, of course, position them to be able to access um, digital opportunities, right? So it's an all-encompassing kind of thing. It's a program that lasts for three months, starts on the 15th of May to the 15th of August, right? 
um, as of now, registration is already on. Registration is already on, and um, early birds uh, before April 30th, and that's for 10. Once it crosses April 30th, um, it runs for 15,000, right? So I'm saying this to us here because um, the state government is, of course, partnering, and they are throwing in some money, and you know how it happens, right? So I, I'm just saying this to you because I'm also speaking with um, some of my corporate friends, you know, who are also willing to throw in some money to further um, discount um, the cost for people. And people from this house, mainly who, whoever registers from this house, I, I'm going to ensure that they benefit from that, ex, that for that discount. And that discount will actually be um, discounts that, that will get your money refunded. Because first of all, you have to register for the courses. And once you do that, um, you also have to finish the course. Because the thing with virtual dreams is that a lot of people start and don't finish. So you have to start. We, we, we look for the criteria, register early. And then once the program starts, finish early. Once you finish early, your name is moved to the people who will be refunded. If it's, if it's your 10,000 you have spent, if it's 15,000 you have spent, you will be refunded that money. Nigerian breweries, for example, is one of such examples. They're giving a millionaire to train 100 people at 10,000. So that's, that's, that's the opportunity that I'm bringing to you. I can assure you that you will benefit from this. So get your... And the age range, of course, is, is all the way from 8 to 11. The categories are there all the way from 18 above. Whatever, whatever ages you are. We have seen countries where seven-year-olds are doing crazy things in there. Right? So, so it, it doesn't limit you, your children, your nieces, your nephews, your friends, your brothers. Time to plug them in. And the URL to, to sign up is, should be right there on the screen. It is tech for all T-E-C-H number 4, A-L-L, dot gracesoft, dot N-G. Tech for all dot graceup.ng that's it there tech for all dot graceup.ng click the enroll button and sign up and once you're signing up use the referral code ralph don't forget that because that's how i know that you are from here are we together if you are signing up from that url you see a referral code section just put ralph there they will they will let me know that you are from here thank you very much and have a beautiful service thank you daddy Let's celebrate our own. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to say a big thank you to all the kinages in the house. Let's celebrate all the kinages in the house. And all those of you worshiping with us for the very first time and those following online, um, I believe that your life and your destiny can never and will never remain the same. Hallelujah. I'm continuing my, the Barnabas factor, the part five, part five of the Barnabas factor. That fan is not my friend. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Man. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Where did I keep this? Okay, if you have a Bible, please do some couple of reading. See the reason behind my madness is not there. Pastor Frank, thank you very much. Um, went out by the weekend. He was with me. We had an awesome time. Hallelujah. The Barnabas Factor. Uh, I will be winding up with the Barnabas Factor on Wednesday. I'll preach the last series. And then we'll start with Fearless. Hallelujah. Amen. And then next month will be the multi experience itself, the conference month. Hallelujah. The Barnabas Factor. Uh, I had I, somebody sent me a testimony. It's typed. I was supposed to read the testimony uh, thanking me for the word and how his life has been transformed and um, what God is doing in his life to say, Thank you, Pastor. Just sitting under you, my life and my destiny has never been the same. I went to preach somewhere three times with um, in a place uh, they wanted me to go back there today and i said no i said to the pastor we didn't have the covenant has not got to that level sometime in a relationship you want to take something you bring something on the table uh, when you bring something on the table then you can place a demand but you can't just walk, walk out of the blue i want to enjoy certain things hallelujah we had an awesome time uh, pastor frank what an amazing time uh, i preached a message on Friday night 
and we came back on Friday morning. We had an awesome three, four hours, awesome time with question time. Great. Uh, the pastor's wife said, Pastor, I heard you preach for the first time. I couldn't sleep the whole of last night. I'm meeting them for the very first time. See, I've, I've, we've, we've, heard, we've, we've seen preachers, but I've never heard the things you were saying. I couldn't sleep last night. And um, that's the opportunity of a lifetime that you must be seized in the lifetime of that opportunity. Hallelujah. The Barnabas Factor, part five series. Actions of the Apostle, chapter number one, verse 14 and 15. Hallelujah. Actions of the Apostle, chapter number one, verse 14 and 15. Just stay with me and follow my madness this last day. Are we there? Can I, is it possible to go with you, Rock Media? I need to do a build up. Now, you know the story. Jesus left the church. And he left, it was told that he left 300 people. But only 120 were consistent. Is your life. The judge shall live by his faith. He left 300 disciples. Only 120 were consistent. And the secret in this kingdom is consistency. Anything you do in this kingdom, you do after a while and stop, you will never be blessed. If you pray 10 hours a day, you don't pray one year again. Is, but the consistency, that you pray 5 minutes a day, 5 minutes tomorrow, five minutes next week, ten minutes, five minutes, fifteen minutes is the consistency. If you give today and give tomorrow and you don't give for six months, it's not going to work. It's the little giving that you give here, there, here, there, here, there, here, there that gets resolved. If you fast today and you don't fast for ten years, you won't see the result of fasting. You have to live a fast. You fast today, fast once in a week, then you go twice in a week, then you get to a point now you are now fasting is a lifestyle. You didn't hear me very well. You now come into the benefit of it. It is consistency in this kingdom that begats power. So tell your neighbor, consistency begat power. Okay, so he left 300, but now Peter, as a leader, got up and had a head count to those who are very committed to the cause. Nobody with us. I went to that church yesterday. I saw something amazing, you know. I was preaching about God is looking for fat people. And I discovered, I guess what? I saw something that shook me. The guys mounting the camera and the media team, believe me, they are between the age of 9 and 13. So I said to the pastor, I didn't have the courage to ask him until I asked him last night. I said, why little children? He said, Pastor, you old people, they take their time and they come to church when they will feel like. So I felt so bad. I had to come to church. The guys who are actually supposed to serve me, they're not available. So I said to myself, I granted everybody and I said, let's train the children. And I trained those children. You literally see them working with their jacket, media. The highest of all of them, if somebody is older, maybe 14. From 9 to 14, they were mounting everything. So it's not God is looking for people who are available. Faithful, available, and teachable. You can be teachable, you can be available, you can be available and not be faithful, you can be faithful, not be available, you can be faithful, available, and not be teachable. But God needs all of that. So let's hear now. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary. The, even his mother didn't miss prayer point. She would have said, it's my son. She didn't miss prayer point. She was there. She wanted something to happen in her life. With the women and with his brothers. Verse number 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples altogether. The number of names were about when they count 120. Please stay with me. The church is 120. On record when Jesus left 300, people who were consistent, 120. Chapter 2, Peter and John. You, if you're a Bible student, Bibles don't just mention name. When names are mentioned, it's trying to tell you something about leadership. So in the leadership of the church, you see Peter and John. In chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, now the Bible said, 50 days after Passover, when it was Pentecost, they were praying, they were praying consistently every day for 50 days. Chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost, Pentecost means 50 days after Pentecost, was fully come, they were all with one accord, where in one place. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in tongues. Verse 41, Peter got up and preached an amazing sermon. 3,000 people was added. 41. 3,000. The church, chapter 1, chapter 2, the church is 3,120. When those 
who gladly received the word we are baptized that day about 3,000 souls about 3,000 souls was added to the church now Peter and John felt they were losing power they need to refill guess what chapter 3 Peter and John decided to go back to what to the place of prayer at the hour of prayer chapter number 3 please verse 1 now Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer. Peter is now the bishop of the church. John, when Jesus died, you know, Peter betrayed him and was feeling bad. But when, when, when Jesus died, the only person that was matured enough that Jesus could trust with his mother was John. This John gave us the book of Revelation. So there were three pillars of the church, Peter, John, and James. You remember chapter 12, Harold, Harold, King Herod, picked James and cut off his head. And they also picked Peter to kill off the movement. But prayer was prayed without consistently for the release of Peter. It was intercession that released the angel that went to release Peter. Are you there with me? Chapter 3. From chapter 3, Peter and John healed a man that was born lame. So fast forward to chapter 4. Chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4. Guess what happened? 5,000 people came into the church. Now as they spoke to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple, the Sadducees came upon them. Verse number 2. Being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Verse number 3. And they lay hands on them and put them in custody until the next day. For it was already evening. Verse number four. Trying to stop. You can't stop though. You can't stop what God is doing. However, many of those who heard the word believe the number of men came to about 5,000. Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. The church is 8,120. Don't stop there. Go to chapter, uh, verse 32. The church has now moved toward a community. The believers are now multitude of believers they've lost count now now the multitude of those who believe we are of one heart and one soul neither did anyone say any of the things that he possessed was his own they had all things in common the church is outnumbered now there is problem now and then a member a force an ordinary man, Josie, uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 36 and 37. This is the key verse of this message. You need to understand. Now, Josie, who was also named Barnabas by the apostle, which is translated the son of encouragement, a Levite from the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and lay it at the apostles' feet. His name is Barnabas. Father, your word is already blessed. I have prayed and I have studied, but Father, now wow me and exceed my expectation and do that which you uh, have predetermined to do before the foundations of the earth. Wow me and wow your people and wow those who are watching around the world. And Father, raise from them, baptize them with the spirit of Barnabas. And Father, release us as a church into the fullness of our destiny. I don't have to wait for you to do it. I thank you and I give you praise in Jesus' name. The Barnabas factor. Barnabas, Bar means son. Ben means son in the old testament but in the new testament bar means son barnabas the son of prophecy the son of a prophet the preacher the son of comfort the son of consolation the encourager the preacher hallelujah this is this man called barnabas his name was actually josie but the apostle so named him they called him they nicknamed him barnabas you need to understand that the word son name when they ask you what's your son name so name nickname or called him the greek word is the word Parakaliod, Parakaliod. The word call is Kalio to Kaliod, but it's Parakaliod. The word para means you are pulled within the vicinity or proximity. But guess what? Now, when they call him Barnabas, what happened is that they pulled him within the proximity and the vicinity where they are. When they called him, they Kaliod him, they brought him near to them. So, so that whatever thing they carry. The experience they have, Barnabas now have that experience. This was just an ordinary man. Dr. Parker said, a force just entered church. A member just entered church. A disciple. I believe he wasn't there with 120. I believe that Barnabas came between the 3,000 and the 5,000. But came and made the difference made a huge difference he's known for two things for his mentoring and the support the notable support that he gave the church that it triggered envy from ananias and Sapphira. some people trying to do what barnabas did but they were not being honest they all fell down and died you don't remember the story very well now but here watch this 
I told you that a Barnabas will be supportive. If God sends you a Barnabas in your, in, your, in, your, in your life, they will be supportive. They will give you their shoulder, all the support you need. Everybody needs a Barnabas that will give them support uh, for them to become all that God wants them to become. Number two, we said a Barnabas will be selfless. He will be unselfish. He will be unselfish. He will not be, he will not be, he will be selfless. He is not self-centered. For you to make this kind of sacrifice. Now hear me very well. This man is a young man. No wife. No children. He would have. I only God know how much he brought on the table. He would have said I needed to buy land. I needed to build a house. I needed to do all of that. But you see me very well. Your life cannot rise beyond your level of giving. I'm going to say it again. Your life can never rise beyond your level of giving. Please stay with me and see what God did with this one man. Praise the name of the Lord. Then I took you to uh, uh, point number four. And I told you that Barnabas was loyal. We spoke on how loyal he was. Uh, it's difficult to find loyal people. There's too many disloyalty. That's why the church is powerless. Anyway, there's disloyalty. You can't find power there. You will hear that they were in one accord. The word one accord from Genesis to Revelation is mentioned 20 times. In the act of the apostle where this, this young set of believers came up and turned their world upside down 11 times. Anytime they're in one place with one accord, with one mind and one spirit and they pray, something will happen. One which is a thousand, two which is ten thousand. What an awesome power you have within your reach. And ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk to you about the fifth part. Barnabas was a humble man. They, oh, sorry, last Wednesday I told us how um, he is a man who has triple grace. The Bible said he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith. Is an excellent man. You don't find that kind of result in one person. You see that in, 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 in Actions of the Apostles chapter 11. Now guess what? Now please watch this. The word apostle is the word apostolo. And the word apostolo means sent one. Somebody who is sent. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot be sent. It will take an apostle to send you for you to become an apostle. Jesus Christ is the great apostle of our soul. If you're a Bible student, one of the names for Jesus is what? He is the great apostle of our soul. So he calls an apostle and he sends an apostle. When an apostle sends you an assignment, you take the mantle of an apostle. The word apostle is the word apostolo, sent one somebody who is sent with the miraculous power with signs wonders and power you hear me very well when you are sent ladies and gentlemen whoever sent you on that commission the grace on that commission goes with you the power on that commission goes with you you are in house on the rock here listen to me it may not be as powerful the location may not be the same but when you worship here and you go to abuja you discover that it's the same. There's something about the entire house. It's a brand. There's a pattern. There's a structure. There's a template how things are done. You didn't hear me very well. Different, different location. Even if it's a small church, when you go, if you have worship with us, you will enter, you will catch the spirit of the house. Are you there with me? Because the word an apostle means sent one. So guess what? Now, in chapter 6, chapter 7, there was problem in the church food was going to become problem some widows were being neglected and then he was going to have a problem the apostle said no we should not allow food you know food has always been problem and we, to really mark your level of spirituality until you pass food tests i told you, you must in stewardship you must pass money tests if food is your problem then you have a problem growing spiritually i have animals and i learned a lot from animals a cock has babes when you pour food it does not rush in fact he carries and gives the base go 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 he gave sign if you're hurry about all you think is for yourself then something is wrong hallelujah stay with me there's a reason behind my madness this last day so the apostle said no this should not happen let's now select seven men who are filled with the spirit and the spirit of wisdom who will now serve tables. You know what's table? They will count offering. They will clean church. They will do administrative work. But for us who are going to be ministering the word, we will give ourselves consistently to prayer and the ministry of the word. So there will be no distraction. When, and when they did that, the Bible said the number of the church grew. So it simply means when somebody comes here, he's not telling us the same story he told us 
Six months. He's bringing something fresh. He's breaking bread with us and our life is finding fulfillment. They made that adjustment. Chapter 7, chapter 8. There was persecution on the church. And listen to me. Persecution is a good thing. Even you as a believer. Pressure is good. Nothing presses the oil out of you like pressure. If you know the price, I always say, you know, the man is anointed. You never know the price of anointing until ask, granot or, ask the granite and ask all if they will tell you the price of the oil. It has to be crushed. If it's not crushed, the oil can't come out. Anybody who is anointed, go and find out. They've been crushed. They have paid a price to get to where they are. Until you are crushed, until you are broken, there's a level of glory you cannot carry. Every man that is anointed and is given, go and find out they are broken. To a priest. When that was made, he got stability in his life, and his life and destiny never remained the same. Are you hearing me? So, pressure is good. Nothing presses the oil out of you like pressure. You can turn pressure into power. So, the church came under persecution, and the church scattered. When they scattered, people carried fire everywhere, and then some people went to Cyprus and went to Cyrene, somewhere around Antioch, and then guess what? Those guys were doing awesome work. God was moving, and the church in Jerusalem, Peter being the bishop, heard what was happening, and he said, who are we going to send? Who can they trust? Barnabas. He is not an apostle yet. That force, that disciple, that member that just came was a force, and then they sent him. Hear me very well. Wonder what will happen when he was sent, and if he didn't go. I want you to just think about that. When the apostle calls him and says, no, I'm not going. Uh, I have another business. You will never have heard of Barnabas again. So let's go to Acts of the Apostle, chapter number 11, verse 18, 19. There's something happening in a body of Christ. But just jump to verse 22, where I just want to read through to 25. Bring my text. Please stay with me. Is it possible, Rock Media? Actions of the Apostle 11. The news of the things came to the ear of the church in Jerusalem. And guess what? See the word? They sent out. See that word there? That word sent out in the Greek means apostolo. The apostle sent out an apostle. This is an ordinary man, a disciple. He was sent by an apostle. And the moment the apostle sent him, the mantle, the grace, the anointing of an apostolic father sits upon his life and they sent him out and Barnabas sent out Barnabas to go as far as what as Antioch so watch the story Barnabas went verse 23 when he came he had seen the grace of God he was glad and encouraged them all with purpose of heart that they should continue keep at it be consistent. Keep at it. Be consistent. Keep at it. Don't stop. It is consistency that begat power. Anybody who will try to sap you of power and tell you not to be focused and be consistent, they have robbed you of life. Say, so stay focused. Keep at it. Verse 24. Verse 24. Please stay with me. This man is God possessed. God possessed this man. Barnabas was a good man. Say with me one. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith. And a great many people we are added to the church. The man has triple grace. One version said he was an excellent man. If you're a good man, if you're a good woman and you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you have faith, you're an excellent person. That's what I dealt with on, on Wednesday. And I also dealt with child trauma. Praise the name of the Lord. There's a lot of people who are adults, but they have not grown. They are living, they are adults, but they are children living in adults' body. 
you hearing me very well? I, I said something. Um, this is not to put down anybody, but just to throw light. If you watch Michael Jackson, he died at 50-something. When he died, his body was so tiny, like, the, like an age of 14 or 15-year-old. It shrink. All that he was wearing, if you look at him, all that he was wearing was to cover a lot of things. But watch this. From age three, his father discovered that he was gifted and talented. There were five Jackson with Janet Jackson. I don't know how many of them, but the boys were five. But there was something about the father. The father, the father saw something in that boy from age three. But guess what? Treated the boy specially. Guess what happened? Michael Jackson never ride bicycle. Michael Jackson never played soccer. Michael Jackson never climbed tree. When they are back from school, the father will say, everybody, eat food, go and play. Jackson, computer class. Um, keyboard. Music. At age three, he had bodyguards. When he's not concentrating, the father will remove his belt and flog him. He had no life. They stole his childhood. He didn't grow normal. That's why at age 50, his best friend. Oh, you didn't hear me very well. Hello. And that ruined his life. Hello. The man was in so much pain, he was taking injection every day. They have to give him injection to sleep. He lived in an oxygen bed. Somebody told him that if, if, he, if he just have to take oxygen and sleep he will live long and because he had the money he was stupidly wealthy i was quite a teenager when he was when he was preparing to do a show for pepsi you remember and and fire caught his head so all that thing you are seeing on his hair was not his hair his ball his hair got burned completely so everything was fixed he had surgery severally his nose he had to temper a lot of things tempered in his life the man was all the entire body was fighting he wasn't eating normal food like everybody Are you hearing me? Hello. His lifestyle. When he, he was one person. Guess what? Two young boys accuse him of sexually molesting them because they're his best friends. He will invite children. He has movies in his house. He will watch movie alone with children and give the children all that they need. And then two of the children said he, he sexually abused them. Guess what? There was court case back and front, court, but guess what? But he settled out of court. When you settle out of court, it simply means you have accepted. But Akashi Magana, he paid $200 million. When that money was paid, that's how he became broke. And he became, till he died, he couldn't buy a phone, he couldn't buy an iPad, he was not credit worthy. He was invited to Saudi Arabia by the then king of Saudi Arabia. You know, when you invite somebody, you pick all his bills. So he went to Saudi Arabia. He won't walk into a shop in one hour. He's, he's, shop freak in one hour he bought things a hundred thousand dollars blew a hundred thousand dollars the sheikh sent him out from saudi back to america and he lived his life all his life he was broke guess what when he died he became very rich right now from royalty he has over one point something billion us dollars in his wheel his father doesn't have anything he wheeled his children to he wheeled some things to blanket the girl the boys they have something whatever thing that was left he gave it to his mother he didn't give anything to his father because he didn't grow up children don't forgive when you hurt them they don't forgive and a hurting person we hurt another person in psychology if you see somebody hurt another person he's sick somebody who has suffered rejection will reject another person it is called childhood trauma that makes children not to grow don't push your children around. Hold them to yourself. Girls and boys who have been addicted to drugs and sex, go and find out. They never had the feel and the love of a father. And when somebody comes and wants to show them what they didn't have, they will take advantage of them and they will abuse them. Are you there with me? That's what I dealt with on Wednesday. Hallelujah. So today, I tell you that Barnabas was a humble man. To be used by God massively the way God used this man you have to be humble not only that he was just humble this man had a desire to invest in people's life we're living in times that people are very selfish can you imagine the investment he made in the church but now see he carries it to invest in people's life watch this now verse 25 he is at Antioch hello Barnabas is in Antioch right now and there's massive revival in Antioch uh, the church is growing 
many were added to the church, ladies and gentlemen. Many were added to the church. I want to say something so that you get to understand me, church. Listen. Christians were first called Christians in Antioch. As the people were getting saved, the Bible said many, I don't know, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, the church grew and Barnabas went there. He was sent by the apostle to watch that movement. While he was there encouraging the people and everything, watch this please, watch this. In Antioch, the Bible says everybody who saw them, I want you to understand, when they called, they first called them Christian at Antioch. When they called them Christian, it was not praise. They were making mockery of them. You know what I'm saying? Oboni. Occult. So when they saw people who were behaving like Christ, they called them Christian. It was not just, it was mockery. So they were first called Christians in Antioch. And please stay with me. The church, the church will not die. But the church can go to sleep. There was a massive movement. That movement is somewhere around Syria, the border of Syria and today, present day, Turkey. Antioch is in Turkey. But let me tell you now, if you go there, you will never hear anything called Antioch. The name Antioch has been changed to the modern name now. The modern name given to Antioch is Atakia. And Atakia right now present is one of the most miserable, decaying place in Turkey. It used to be 98% Christians and 2% Muslims. Now it is full of darkness. That's where you have the Taliban. You have all of those rebels that are killing people and exploding with people with bombs. Because the church has gone to sleep. Most of those big churches that was built are now museum. Hallelujah. But watch this man. This humble man who has the spirit of investing in people. He made investment in the church. Watch now the next verse now. Verse 25. Watch Barnabas now. Verse 25. Now he's in Antioch. If you are a bishop, he's not like bishop in Antioch. He would have rested there. But guess what? While he was in Antioch, he got the wind. That one man who persecuted the church gave his life to Christ. There's a man called Saul who gave his life to Christ. Barnabas left Antioch. Then Barnabas departed for Tulsa. Tulsa eh? Tarsus. The word Tarsus means flat basket. That's the name of the village where Saul, who became Paul, flat basket. He went to Tarsus to what? To seek Paul. He heard this one guy who used to persecute the church somebody who was in the occult somebody who was a prostitute uh, has come into the saving knowledge in his mind he went looking for him the bible said to seek the word in the greek seek to search out for to search out means to look for something as if something is missing he went to seek to search out he traveled abroad to get out of your location and spread abroad and go abroad and go forth seeking for somebody to invest in their life look at verse 26 when he finally found Saul now when he had found him he brought him to Antioch and so it was that for a whole year they assembled the church together and taught great number of people and the disciples were first called Christian in Antioch you will never understand this except you're a Bible student listen to me the type of Paul somebody like Paul is like Jesus I'm not calling him, I'm not, I'm not trying to equate him with Jesus. The impact of Jesus' ministry, what Jesus did, you will see it happen every 400 years. Between Malachi, God's, after the book of Malachi, God stopped talking. But when you have the Roman Catholic Bible, you will hear there are Bibles, Maccabees, anybody? Maccabees, the five, the seven books of Moses, all of them, those were not inspired. After Malachi, God was not talking. It's silence years. It's 400 years of silence until John the Baptist, until Jesus came. Are you hearing me very much? Paul is that kind of person that God gives to the planet Earth once in 500 years. It's called the man who founded churches. If you carry the New Testament, one, divided by three, one third of the New Testament Paul gave us. So that one faith that he will now persecute, he is now being called to suffer for that faith. Hi, Yalaba, stay with me. And they thought, Barnabas, disciple Paul. Watch me. So, by Wednesday, you discover something. It's Barnabas and Paul. When Barnabas picked Paul, invested in Paul's life. And in that church, allowed church Paul to grow under his leadership. From time to time, he gives Paul the opportunity to preach. 
when you are given the opportunity to preach, an opportunity for you to serve. It takes humility to serve. You have to have a humble spirit to serve. So that you can have an impartation in your life. So that something rubs on you. Hallelujah. What is, what is the meaning of a humble person? Who is a humble person? Ask yourself, are you a humble person? Are you humble? Look at your neighbor. Who is a humble person? Who is a humble person? Say, I'm humble. You don't tell people you're humble. People will tell you whether you're humble or not. And hear me very, you cannot be humble. If you are broke, you cannot be humble. You know, when you come to church, ah, Pastor Jacques, are you here? Ah, uh, Martin Jimmy, how are you? Jimmy, how are you? Ah, uh, Pastor Rose, how are you? First lady, how are you? Ah, uh, Pastor, you know what? Eh, uh, Pastor T, oh, I saw you dancing in church. I like, I like your swag. God bless you, sir. You're broke. Then you now became a multi millionaire. You have 50 million, 100 million in your account. You can still see pictures. Say, hey, how are you? Oh, you, you blessed me last Sunday. Hey, Ralph, yeah, yeah, how? We now, okay, truly, truly, the man is humble. It wasn't situation that made him humble. Many people that you call humble is situation that have made them humble. Allow them to get small money. Allow small money, chinkly money to enter the account. The real peace inside of them will come out. That's why they tell you, you don't know who you are talking with. But when they didn't have anything, yeah, madam, yeah, yeah, well done. I really appreciate you. Ah, you are doing well in that church. God bless you. God bless you. Ah, bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Oh, man of God, man of God, how are you, sir? How are you, sir? God bless you, sir. Drive, drive a BMW six series. I have a hundred million in your account, and you can see see people. We now know that this one is not conditioned. This one is inbuilt. Let me, say, let me say it again. Who is a humble person? Let's do this rock media. Who is a humble person? A humble person is not proud and does not believe they are better than other people. Yeah? Google define a humble person. A humble person is not a proud person and he does not believe that he's better than other people. When you have a sense of superiority over another human being, you are proud. Place is quiet. If he ever crosses your mind, Kedinwa, who do you think you are? Do you know who my father is? Do you know which school I went? You are not my class. And please watch this. Watch this. All the people who have struggled in their life and not grow very well. If you have children and you teach your children to have sense of superiority and have the spirit of pride in them, you've messed up their life. The basic thing you teach your children is this. God first, hear me? God first. If you put God first, God will take you places. You want to rise, you want to become great, you want your dream to come to pass. The person you should hold is God. The Bible said, if the ways of a man pleases God, God makes all his enemies to be at peace with him. Whatever battle you're fighting, if you get it right with God, God will force your enemy to make peace with you. So, God first. Say with me, God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and these other things that people are killing themselves. Food, clothes, car. I want to go on vacation. Abroad, you're killing yourself. It will happen naturally. Teach your children God first. That wherever they find themselves and the place is called church, don't just come to church and cross your leg. Find something to do. Stay planted. The church does not belong to any man. The man is only entrusted. God entrusted the church in his hand as what? As an overseer. Jesus is the one who died for people in the church. We're sitting down here today. We are on Mount Zion where there are innumerable, innumerable number of angels. Your attitude, your behavior is, doc is documented and God has it firsthand. Your contribution. Uh, yeah? I wish I have time. We have come to the church of the firstborn. It's somewhere in, in Hebrew 12, 22. Go, let me show you. If you. There are two mountains. The first is Mount Sinai. There, when God speaks, he thunders. People that, if animals come close to where the mountain is, they will die. If you live your life carelessly, God, when God talks, he's thundering. Da, da, da. That was under the law. See church now. Look at Mount Zion. This is how Mount Zion is. Hebrew 12, 22. This is Mount Zion, please. But you have come to Mount Zion. You have not come to that mountain where people are afraid. 
people, when you come to any church, nobody should make you afraid. You should be bold like a lion and free like the air. I'm not saying you should have a sense of superiority and be proud. Are you hearing me? Nobody should make you afraid. Nobody should preach a sermon that will make you afraid. This is not to, we drive fear here, we don't put fear inside people. You know, they tell you, if you don't do this, I'll curse you. If you don't do this, this will happen to you. No, that's not. We, but we have come to Mount Zion. Guess what? It is the city of the living God. This is the city of the living God. It is now our heavenly, heavenly, heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable number of angels. Listen, there's no empty seat here. There are angels everywhere. The number of angels in this church outnumber us. So your attitude, whatever thing you do, God has for hand. If you are helping me or you are making the work difficult, God has for hand of the people who are making things easy and who are making things difficult. And me, I won't fight you because the church is not my own. The owner of the church, when he's tired, he will know what to do with you. I'm only a steward. Somebody who has been entrusted. An apostle in Lagos sent me here. I also have sent some apostles. Real leadership growth is you must have a sending capacity. Any church that does not have a sending capacity, the church is not growing. We should raise leaders and give them a sending capacity, give them mandate, give them ministry. They take the ministry up to the next level. Please leave that verse of scriptures. You have innumerable number of angels here. Verse 23. I want you to see something. To the, it's called what? To, you have come to the general assembly. When Tunubu goes to UN, they call that meeting general assembly. All president of the whole world sit down to discuss the progress of this planet earth. The church is called the general assembly. They got it here. It is the church of the firstborn. It is not the church of Pastor Paul Ade Olu Ade Farasid. This church, House on the Rock, is the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. If you don't know, we are registered in heaven before we are registered in, in corporate commission. To the God who is judge of all. To the spirit of just men. Be made it doesn't matter how bad you come in here. If you come in here, you want the wisdom of Solomon, you will get it. If you come in here, you want the wisdom of Joseph, you will get it here. In this place, the spirit of just men. You may come twisted, but God will heal you so that you can go and be healing. You may come in broke. The spirit of just men is being made perfect. Verse 24. Verse 24. We have come to the mediator. So when, anytime you come here, Jesus is here. We have come to the mediator. When we pray, Jesus is praying for us of the new covenant and to what? To the sprinkling of blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Guess what? Jesus is the mediator and there's a sprinkling of blood for your forgiveness of sins, past, present, and future. The blood is speaking. Are you, are you, did you cast me very well? This is church. This is how church should be. So Barnabas found Paul and impacted and invested his life in the life of Paul. What you are going to hear on Wednesday, more than 15 times is mentioned Barnabas, Paul. Barnabas, Paul. Barnabas, Paul. Barnabas, Paul. Barnabas, Paul. Barnabas, Paul. As you read, you hear Paul. Barnabas, Paul, Barnabas, Paul, Barnabas, Barnabas, Paul, Barnabas, Paul, Paul, Barnabas. Until they separated after first, second missionary. That's how leadership is. So Barnabas, speak John Mark who gave us the book of Mark. Paul did not want to carry John Mark. Paul is a non-nonsense person. Paul is not nonsense Barnabas said to him, if I had treated you that way, it was Barnabas that took Paul after in Antioch, took him to Jerusalem. Even people like Peter will not want to have anything to do with Saul. But he took him and said, he's my boy. This boy is truly is, is, is born again. He's been transformed. An ordinary force. See his investment to the churches, his investment to humanity. Who are you investing your life on? Who are you investing your life on? I was driving the other day. I saw a man who is over 80 begging on the street. I don't know who I was driving with, but I had somebody by my side. And I said, this man is not supposed to be on the street. 
and I said, can I teach you wisdom? He had, he had it going on for him at one time. He had strength. He saw money. He handled money. He had life. But the truth of the matter, guess what? He never made any investment in anybody's life. If he had made investment in anybody's life, whoever has made investment in their life, they will not leave him on the streets. This is quiet. Barnabas was a humble man. A humble person is not proud and does not believe that they are better than other people. When a man, when a man is humble, a humble person is authentic and sincere with their words. How you know somebody is humble? There are two words that describe a humble person. They are authentic and they are sincere. They are genuine and they are sincere with their words. The word humble means modest. It means to be without excess of pride. You are a humble person when there is no excess of pride in your life. The word humble means you are broke. God, every person that God is using mightly, go and find out they are broke. They are broke in certain places. When Jacob fought with God, God touched him. He started walking like this. And that's when he became prince and carried power. Because God will leave you with something so that you don't think that you are perfect. Bishop Jake said, you know, an anointed man of God, you go and preach. You lay hands on people. Pastor Frank saw it. He said, people were falling. You saw people falling? Just touching people, blowing on them, just falling. Then you come back home. You have a son that is sick and his leg is twisted. And you have prayed. Nothing has happened. God allowed that one to take that one humble you. But you didn't catch it. Because if everything is perfect in your life, you will think you are God. He will leave you with a bot. So that when you come to church, you are very, very humble because there is something that you serve, you are believing God. A humble person is broken. A humble person is crushed. A humble person is meek. Proverbs chapter number 18, verse 18 and 19. Almost there, six minutes, almost there. Are you catching something? The place is quiet. Proverbs 16, 16, 18, and 19. 16, 18, and 19. Let's read all together. One, two, three, go. Pride goes. I didn't hear you. Let's go. One, two, three, go. Pride goes before. And what? If you see a man with a spirit of pride, very soon his life will be destroyed. Pride is a destroyer of destiny. Nothing destroyed the destiny of a man or a woman but pride. There were people who would have become great in life. Pride. The spirit of pride took them over. God resists the proud. And he gives grace to the humble. Hear me very well. Humble people don't want to have anything to do with people who are very proud. Pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit, a proud spirit. When you see somebody who has a proud spirit, very soon they will fall. Verse 19. Better to be of a humble spirit with the better to be of a lonely of a humble spirit with the lonely than to divide spoil with the proud. I like to be around people who are humble than to be to do business with proud people. When you do business with proud people and you're sharing spoil, you go hear things. This is quiet. The word humble is marked with simplicity. Having a humble opinion of yourself. The word humble is in the spirit. You have a humble spirit and manner. The word humble is where you get the word humility. Humility is freedom from pride and arrogance. It's a state of being humble. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my mentors, his name is Andrew Moy. 33 years ago, 30 years ago in the Bible college, I read his book. I want you to say, this is the, this is the, this is the crop of the matter. Um, leave, that, leave that slide. He wrote a book on pride. In his excellent book called Humility, he wrote a book on humility, Jeff. And he made this statement. He said, pride is the beginning of every sin. The first sin is pride. Why did Adam and Eve fail? Pride. They wanted to be like God. 
The first sin is not adultery. The first sin is not coming. Is not is not fornication. The first sin is not uh, drunkenness. The first sin is pride. The man called Lucifer was anointed cherub. It was pride that took him out of his place. This man wrote a book, and he 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 said, every one of us, every day you wake up, you should take the mirror of the word of God through to check yourself. You can't tell yourself, I'm a humble person. No, you can't tell yourself. It's people that will tell you who you are. Jesus preached a powerful message. And when the crowd had left, he called his disciples. You know, he told them, he said, who do men say I am? PJ, what are people saying about me? We should have a service and all we ask ourselves. And ask and be honest. Rev, what are, you, what are people saying? There's something people are saying about you and it's real thing. There are people who have experienced you in the barbing saloon, in the mechanic shop. They've experienced you. You have misbehaved. You have acted out. They know you. You come to church. You are pretending as if you are a good person. Jesus, you are not powerful until you can tell what are people saying about me. Some said uh, you are Jeremiah. Some said you sound like uh, Ezekiel. Some said you are Elijah. He said, but who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are Christ, the Christos, the anointed one, the son of the living God. And he said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Another version said, pride, leave, leave it, leave it, leave it. Pride will lead to destruction. Pride leads to destruction and arrogance to downfall. Give me a message and then amplify classic. I love this um, character you're using for us. First pride, then the crash. Did you hear that? Once you see first price, the next thing that's going to happen what? Is a crash. The bigger the ego, the harder the fall. You hear me? The bigger the ego, the harder the fall. Give me, give me, give me amplified classic. Give me amplified classic. Is that amplified? Pride goes, that's just amplified. Amplified classic. I know you have to go online, but don't worry. Stay with me. Now watch what he said. He said, every one of us, look at me now. Every one of us should pray. We pray that God will place a mirror of the truth before our face. When he places that mirror in our face, so that we can read who we are, the mirror does not lie. When you stand before the mirror, the mirror tells you everything. It tells you there's a black spot here. It tells you there's a growth here. It tells you your ear is big. Oh. It tells you your nose is big. Can you it tells you the mirror won't lie so the word of God is a mirror people will never, all of your friends will never tell you who you are they are massaging your ego they will keep massaging your ego my pastor said as you become blessed don't allow psycho fans to be around you let people who are true friends who can look at you and still respect you and honor you and tell you the truth because when you become wealthy your friends and your status change what you have is psycho fans People who sing your praise because of what they can get from you. Any friend that cannot rebuke you, like Mr. Damu said, that Betty would still give her respect and still tell her the truth. You don't, you don't leave, you keep those friends for life. Psycho fans. So you need to look at the mirror. Bring the word of God. I'm hearing me very well. I, I think, who are you? Are you humble? Ask your neighbor, are you humble? Are you a humble person? The reason why God could use Barnabas is because Barnabas was humble. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. If this man could let go his wealth, he was in Antioch. Barnabas, please pay attention. Barnabas was in Antioch, and guess what? A prophet called Agabus got up and prophesied. There's coming hunger that will hit the whole world. People will suffer. And Barnabas organized the church in Antioch to raise money to send to them Peter, the church. It's like there's coming a problem in Kaduna. And then somebody, a son somewhere, Imo or somewhere, or somebody, somebody in London or somebody in America who passed through church. We said, no, Kezito, the smart, said, look, let's, let's put money together and send to the church because things are hard. And guess who carried the money? It was Barnabas and Paul that they sent with the money. You don't, send, you don't put money with anybody, anybody's hand. They must be tested and approved. When church gathers money, it's not everybody who put money in their hands. Ask your neighbor, are you a humble person? It's the mirror that will tell you whether you are humble. So the man, Andrew Moye, said, as you read, there are 12 signs of pride in a person's life. I'm going to mention 12 signs. I didn't say you are proud, but you look at the mirror, 
you will write it down and be looking at it. If you, if you pass through everything I say, eh, and there is no fault in these 12 signs, you are truly a humble person. Are you there with me? Barnabas was a humble person. There, he, until, there's a level of anointing you cannot carry until you're broke. You're broken. There's a level of power. Go and find out. Guys who carry grace, they just look like ordinary people. In fact, when you become great, you have to be very careful about your protocol because people will do their work past the one they don't send them. Oh, you don't know what I'm saying? Hello? That's why you don't give people power. If anybody wants 100% power, they must be 100% accountable. You hear me? Dr. Joseph Parker said, if you want power, be accountable. You only give power to people who are accountable. So when you give somebody work, they go and do the work, they come and give you and brief you. There's an, a rec recording and an accounting system that you can be trusted with more. If not, you'll be doing your own thing. I have never told you that this church is mine. I am accountable. Hello? Are you there with me? I have never gone to where they count money there. As they are counting money today, there will be protocols standing and watching how they are counting money. When they finish, Samala is there, Ayara is here, uh, Akin is there. Those guys all have their job. They help. That's Pamela has been doing this for 20 years. They will count when they finish. That's when they now when they finish counting. Charles will now come. What they counted is what he will put on paper. When they finish, Samala will sign. Are you hearing me? Pastor Joe will now sign. Then Charles will now sign. And then guess what? Then you come on my table on Tuesday for me to look at it. I have never seen money in a paper now they see. I only spend money on paper. If they tell me, say, today offering, now 15 naira, now 15 naira I go spend within the week. Then at the end of the month, as checks goes in, every check that goes out is for to copy it. Are you hearing me? Hello? So that now at the end of the month, he, at the accountant rise report, there are three people that sees the church report. Pastor Paul, Pastor Kola, Pastor Goke. They all have DHL of all of the copy. The only, and they have copy of our check, our tithe. They only have a photocopy. The real check goes to mission because it's mission. Pastor Paul will not go to bank. It's mission that will go to bank. So you're writing one letter, you're copying three people with a check of the tithe. This is what came. This is what we did. This is how money was spent. And this is the tithe. If you have somebody like that, you will trust them with more power. But when they send it to go and do your own, you go to do your own. Say, Ralph, we have to be smart. I went to preach somewhere, Reverend Deramola said, he said, when I see this small boy, we train this small boy. That's why I brought him here. Everybody that was preaching was older than me by 22, 22 years. That woman that preached here is 73, I'm 53, 20 years. If Ojai showed up, it would have been 20 something. They're still talking about those three sessions I had. When I finished preaching, then I'm going to say, I trained him. He's my boy. He said, I slapped him one time in class. I knocked his head. But he has forgiven me because he's now a powerful man of God. <laughs> he said, when I was a young pastor, my senior pastor, I would enter his office. He's eating chicken. You know, you're like, you ask yourself, are you sure all of us are called? Is it the same salary? Ha! Huh? So one day he said, Sir, I want to come and sit down with my I want to ask you, what's the secret? I shared the man it is carry church money. Says, sir, how did you? It's the same work. How did God bless you? He said, you know, you have to be smart. And he's a big person. There are churches under him. When the churches send their report, he will carry the report. He will send it, but he will keep their tithe. He will spend the tithe. He said, the day they found out. By the time they found out and sat down to audit ministry account, churches that have been sending reports for two, three, four, five years, they've sent reports, there's no tithe. And they trace the tithe to this one man. Somebody is driving his tithe and living in tithe, with tithe, people's tithe. And you are celebrating them and saying that they are great. So the, the, the general was saying, we'll discipline him. He said, our brother, we don't send him out of ministry, but he will not pastor a church. Let him come and walk under me so that I can be seeing him closely. They want to help the man ministry. Because 
at one time, he left ministry and went to tell her, he said, okay, maybe I'm not covered for ministry. Big man of God. Reverend Della Mola was a resident pastor, like the way I am with the pastor team. They put him, moved him from the state where he was, moved to where the general overseer is, and they look for one rich family. He's like, we stay with the ELM family. If you don't deal with your board, your board will kill you. So he, the man he was living with was an accountant, just got married newly. It's a transport company. So every, when he finished work, he will count all the buses, he will count the money, he will bring it home, arrange it. In the morning, he will go to bank. And he just got married. So when he comes back, him and his wife, they will go and shower. He will leave money in the bedroom. The pastor will enter. You know when they stand, bundle, 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 he, will, he will remove, 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 you know. So when the man gets to the bank, he will tell him, okay, this is your money, no come. He said, but I counted it. He kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. One day this man came back. He had put all the money pack and entered the shower. And then he told his wife, he, he remembered something. He came out with towel. He came and met pastor. You know in the acts. You know him. <laughs> they sat down as eldership to deal with the matter. The man was so ashamed of himself. You know what he did? He went that night and bought gambling. He drank it. And killed himself. He couldn't take the chain. Cut your coat according to your size. And wait for your time. So there are 12 signs to check. As you're checking the mirror, number one is arrogance. When you talk, are you, are you rude? Arrogance. Believing that you are superior and better than other people in every aspect. You know, anybody who is arrogant. I used to be a sales boy some years back. I sold for Mrs. Okwakoro. The man that came here, the Brigadier General, sold for Mrs. Jaco. One major bought something in the shop. I don't know what happened. He came back and he was insulting the boy. It was This guy, now. the major is retired now. I wish he would see this boy that he insulted, that he was one time in ADC. He said to him, do you know who I am? He knows that the boy's father is a soldier. Do you know who I am? My parents didn't bring me up eating Eba and Irish. Irish. People, they brag about Irish. Arrogance. You mirror yourself. Are you arrogant? Are you rude when you talk to people? Do you talk to people anyhow? And you talk to people with a sense that you are superior to them. Then you have the spirit of pride. Number two sign. Self-centered. Self-centered. Are you a self-centered person? Focusing excessively on your achievement, your desire, your needs. It's all about you, 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 you. It's about you. Everything must be done about you. Everybody can go and die. It's you. When you are siblings, the man who has God heart is possessed in a sibling. is the one who looks after every other person. Some people don't care if all of these are siblings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Watch this. In psychology, go and find out. Can you guys stand up? Can you all stand up? And truly, he's the firstborn. The guys who suffer most are these guys. They're carrying a lot of weight. They have their, their own family issues. They, they, everybody is looking up to them. The weight is heavy here. Are you hearing me? And guess what? If he gets it right, everybody will guess it right. If he misses it, everybody will go gaga. But let me tell you, the guys way no care, no send anybody. Where's the middle? The middle child. You see these two people. They don't feel anything. In psychology, the middle child, go and find out, they don't care. When everybody is paying price, they are just, you know, consign me. You know, now when I did here, it's, it's always the, the middle child in psychology. And guess what? The spoiled child in the family is this one, is the last one. Everybody loves them and they know you love them. They know you love and they're the only one. Hear me very well. Children that have hurt their parents are people, are children that their parents love the most. Any child you love so much and you love them, you cannot correct them and tell them the truth. They will hurt you in the future. You will cry blood. Where's Samila? Where's Pastor Samila? He said something to me. He walked to some rich people. This Kaduna boy. Some Parents send their children abroad. Some of them came back. They didn't school. They came back addicted to drugs. 
their parents was their lifetime and investment to make them better people. You know why? They so much love them, they didn't give them their experience. Don't just help your child. Give them your experience. Tell them where you came out from and tell them what you've been through in life. You see, you see this last one? He will collect money from all of these people. So they say we should buy biology textbook in stone and cousin. He will collect money for cousin. He will collect money for stone. But stone and cousin is one textbook. Sit down. Look at it very well. Are you a self-centered person? You're only thinking about yourself. A man can be, I was preaching yesterday, the pastor, they asked me a question here. So a man is selfish. His wife pays rent, pays school fees. He will go to the market, buy food and cook only for himself. I said, I lie. The woman said, no, no. They were telling me, they were telling me to say whether they should divorce somebody. I saw something yesterday. I said, I said, I don't believe in divorce. I said, you don't understand, pastor. This man will go to the market and buy food and cook for only himself and eat and leave everything plate and the woman will come back and wash. Some, some people are that selfish. Hear me very well. He saw it somewhere. If as a man you can sit down and eat and your family have not eaten or a woman you can sit down and eat comfortably and your family have not eaten, you're not a father, you're not a mother. The man who trained me says your meal is given to everybody and to everybody's food. If nobody gets food, they take my food and give to them a drink, Gary. That's a father. That's how you know a father. That's how you know a mother. Until everybody has eaten. That's the price you pay. You're not a self-centered person. Number three. Boasting. Frequently talking about your accomplishment, possession, your car, your family. Your, your, all with the intention of seeking validation and admiration. If all the you're talking, have you seen my car? Somebody where somewhere somebody came and stepped on my feet. I said, ah, okay, you step on my feet. He said, sorry. He said, Pastor, you should be happy to step on your feet. You know how much this shoe is? This shoe can buy a car. I said, if you can buy a car, now you step on me. My own cannot buy a car. Some people will, will they they won't give you. They will. Oh, they're just trying to tell you that we're not class. That's boasting. That's number three. Number four, unwillingness to apologize. There are people that will never tell you they're sorry. People don't know that it's pride. Unwilling, they will not. Listen to me, nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. We all make mistakes. We do. We mess up. Sometimes we, get, we don't get it right. But guess what? Some people are not even marking your failure. They've allowed it to be. Your unwillingness to apologize. And when somebody says, this is what you have done, and you cannot apologize, you don't see the reason why you should apologize, you have the spirit of pride. Refusing to admit your mistakes or ask for forgiveness. You don't hear me very You don't beg for forgiveness. You ask for forgiveness. Everybody look at me here. You don't beg. You don't beg for forgiveness. You don't beg to be loved. Because if you have to beg for anything, you're under control, you're under manipulation. And in relationship, the Bible kind of relationship does not give room for control, abuse, or manipulation. Hallelujah. The willingness, unwillingness to apologize. Refusing to admit mistakes or to ask for forgiveness when you have done something wrong. Number five, judgmental attitude. Some people are judgmental in their attitude. You quickly find fault with others preaching their style of leadership, their personal lives, etc. At the same time, you criticize and condemn others without showing empathy and understanding of their circumstances. You see, I can say, um, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. You did something wrong. I want to talk to you. I could say it first by feeling I have empathy for you and have understanding that look, we are all human beings. We all make mistakes. But please, this is what you did. It's not good. You see, I've identified with you. But when I now say that you are, you are the problem, me, I'm not the problem, I'm perfect. You won't take my advice. 
because you are not a high priest. Even Jesus is a high priest that is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Until you feel people, you can't talk to them for them to get you. You must have empathy. Number, f- number, s- number six, the reluctant to serve. Some people don't want to serve. You don't want to serve others. Instead, you always expect others to help you and your family. Have you understand some people? It's only them you help. It's only them and their family that needs help. Everybody should go and die. Nothing leaves you for other people. Listen to me. If people make sacrifice, you should make sacrifice too. But if everybody, everything, if life revolves only around you, that everybody should die for you, something is wrong. The reluctant to serve other people. Life is about service. What I'm doing right now, I'm serving you. I have not slept well the whole of last night. This week has been very stressful. It has not stopped me from doing my job. Because this is what I'm called to do. Hallelujah. Did you get it? That's number six. Number church. And he's doing like somebody. That's envy. When people do something that is good. You see me here? When somebody is preaching here, when I stand here, I'm standing not for the man. I'm standing for God who gave us the gift. I'm just saying that you're doing well. Pastor Frank, I will get up to preach. When I get up to preach, when I'm preaching, the choir, the pastor, the wife, everybody stands up. I have to beg them, please sit down. I know it's not me they're standing for. Something is released that triggered them to stand. They stand for God. His word is the final authority. Did you catch it? No, what number are we? Number seven. Number eight, refusing advice. You can advise everybody. Nobody can advise you. You reject counsel. You reject guidance from others because of a belief that your ideas are always superior to them. You don't have a teachable spirit. Even your children can speak sense inside you. You are truly a humble person when sometimes you don't know what to do. You know what to do, but you just call your children. What do you think? So that you can enter inside their mind and see how they think. And sometimes you will find one or two of them who are wise. Because out of the mouth of babes and suckling has God ordained strength. Refusing advice. There are people that no matter how you tell them, you talk to them, they will not listen. In fact, I am told that it's a red flag. If you want to marry, anybody that does not listen to anybody, don't marry them. If there's nobody in your family that will tell you, keep quiet, you keep quiet, don't marry that person. It's the red flag. Bishop Jakes has a church of 34,000. His bishop's church is 500. But when Bishop Sharma talked to Bishop Jakes, his legs shake like this. There should be somebody who tells you, sit down! And you sit down. If nobody can tell you, sit down. You are a time bomb waiting to explode. Number nine, seeking recognition. You go to a place, you are more concerned. Can you imagine I came? They didn't give me a good seat. In this atmosphere now, you came late, we didn't even know you know. So I'm not going back to that church. I came, the ushers didn't bring me front seat. Now front seat, you come on our God, you come worship. So can you imagine I, I went there, they just treat me anyhow. It simply means there's a spirit of pride. That's number nine. Number ten, defensiveness. When you are always defensive, when confronted with constructive criticism and feedback, you become defensive. Some people are always, they build walls around them. And sometimes, hear me very well, when you don't grow very well, you build walls around you because you don't want anybody to talk to you. There are people that God has given something to, they can say something for you to listen. And guess what? Don't always be in a hurry to give advice. Don't be in a hurry. Because you're in a hurry to give advice, after a while they'll soon get tired of you. And sometimes the things that you say will be shallow. Be a good thinker. So that when you bring an advice, whoever you are giving the advice, say, this person knows what he's talking about. Don't be in a hurry. Hallelujah. Number 11. Almost there. Are you seeing the mirror? Ingratitude. Ingratitude. You take 
good, you take God's blessing for granted and fail to acknowledge or express gratitude to those who support you and bless you. For everything anybody does for you, you should tell them thank you. If you can't say thank you, you have the baptism of pride. Anything you didn't ask for, somebody gave you. If you don't collect, you're a proudful person. I learned that from Bishop Jakes. Everybody look at me here. Let me say this. Anything you didn't ask for, you were given. Somewhere in your prayer, you called it. Somewhere in your confession, you called it. Somewhere in speaking the word, you called it. I'm just standing here, and PJ walks to me and gives me a check of 100000 I said, I don't need it. You know I'm not need it. Father, some good ink, I don't need it. I didn't, if you ask for some, something, it's different. When you don't ask for something, it's given to you, it's called what? The word gift is called charisma. Free gift. Is grace, undeserved mercy is given to you. When it's given to you, no matter how small, be grateful. Be grateful. Everywhere I go, even in hotels where they serve me, People who serve me, when they serve me, I tell them thank you. My house self, they bring water to me, I tell them thank you. My children, when they serve me water, drink, I tell them thank you. Gratitude. It shows that your heart is humble. But when you are an ingrate, you have the baptism of the spirit of pride. Be grateful. Where you are is somebody, somebody is praying to be at where you are. And you are saying, what is this? Nothing is happening here. It's somebody's prayer point. Your level of success. Somebody is fasting and praying. Raga, if I can be PJ, be a lecturer in Cat Poly, in the engineering department. Just, I don't need a car. That's all I'm praying for. You're married to a woman. She pays rent. I told them yesterday. You're married to a woman. She pays rent. And you're treating her like shit. Before she wake up in the morning, breakfast on bed. Wash her clothes and iron it. And be useful. Because she has just solved a problem. And this time you go and cook food. You will eat alone. You will not give your wife and your children. You know, the woman that was there, I said, Pastor, you don't understand. My husband will cook. He will not even give the children. I said, ah, ah. He said, forget about me or forget about me. His own children, he will you cook and eat. I said, I never see that thing before. You will go market and buy food and cook and the food is only for you. And you have children who are calling you daddy and mommy. That's the height of self-centeredness and selfishness. Kubashi, you go here and for old age. Yes. You go here and for old age. Don't be Michael Jackson. I tell you. Michael Jackson right now, his net worth is over a billion US dollars. His father does not have access to a coin. Because the guy has zero it in his... It's in his testament and his will. You can't change it. And guess what? If I was his pastor, I would have asked him to forgive his father. Maybe, maybe he wouldn't have died prematurely. And somebody said to me, Pastor, you've been telling us to honor our father. What if you have a father that is a rascal? As is difficult. He taxes everybody. He's not responsible. He taxes the children and the wife and does not bring something on the table. I said... That's how he was fathered. That's how he was raised. Don't judge him that same way. If you judge him that same way, your own case will be difficult. Any, any sin you don't forgive, when you fall into it, your own case will be worse. Hallelujah. Ingratitude. And finally, spiritual pride. You know what spiritual pride is? You feel spiritually superior to other people. And sometimes you consider yourself, you are more... Have you seen people in a place? I'm praying for people that God should save you. May God have mercy on you. God should not have mercy on them. God should have mercy on you. They have made themselves self-righteous. That's the position of the firstborn. Those two boys. The, fathers, the first son said to his father, he was angry. And the father went to meet him. What is it? Why are you angry? He said, my brother took his own part of the inheritance and went and, and wasted it and slept with a prostitute and wasted it and he came back. Me, I'm here serving you. I never offend you, not even just this once. Not even a goat for me, for a party. This guy came, rascal, wasted everything and you threw a party for him. 
He's the firstborn, but he has not grown. There's a child living inside of him. He should be glad that his brother, like his father, is back. He was dead. Now he's alive. He missed the mark, but he's back. Can I tell you one thing? People who offend you, when you forgive them, they love you more. To whom much is forgiven, they love more. That's why Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. Jesus cast out seven devils. Even at his death, she wouldn't let his body smell. People who are forgiving much, they love more. You hear me? You know that spiritual pride? When I was a young pastor, I closed with this so that we can pray. Did, did you receive something? I met a general. I went to preach somewhere and he met me and said, I just want us to be a friend. I, I, I can sense the grace of prayer in your life. So we, we arranged so that we can be praying. And one day he said to me, he said, you know my problem? Is that I get up in the morning to share. You know, just someone busy sharing money devotion. To share with the family. When I finish, my wife says to me, there's more to that text. You just touch the ABC. There is X, Y, Z. That's a sense of spirituality. That you are shallow. We are deep. By your head. I don't know where the Holy Spirit touched you. Pride goes before a fall. If you see, nothing destroys a destiny of a man like pride. God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. You're in this building. You want to give your life and your heart to Jesus Christ. Raise your right hand. Talk to God. I give you two minutes. Talk to God. As you reflect in the mirror. Look at your life and reflect in the mirror. You fall on the stone or the stone falls on you. Just talk to God. Say, God, where did I miss it? Lord, help me. Now, extrail me. Purge me. Help me. Lord, if there's anything that looks like pride in me, the spirit of pride in me, operate it, remove it, deal with it, break me, mold me to be that person you have preordained for me to become. Mold me, break me. There's a song like that. Mold me, break me. There's a song like that. Mold me, break me. There's a song like that. Mold me, break me. God can only use a broken vessel. Say, God, break me. It should not be about me. It should be about you. People should not see me. They should see Jesus. You have 60 more seconds. Talk to God, please. 60 more seconds. Talk to God. Look at the mirror. Look at the mirror. Look at the mirror. Look at the mirror. The mirror will tell you everything. Now you want to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. Raise your right hand wherever you are. Raise your right hand. You're here. You're not born again. You're here. You're not born again. If you fall down and die, you're not sure you'll make heaven. Raise, raise your right hand. Before I bring this service to a close, raise your right hand, please. And so, Father, your word has gone forth. We saw this man called Barnabas. A new force who came into church. Became a member. And then became a disciple. And before our very eyes, he became an apostle. And Father, you use him to bring so many people into the kingdom of God. Because he's broken. Father, I surrender this church to you. And I said, Father, break us. Mold us. You are the porter. We are the clay. Whatever thing you have in your mind at the back of time to do in us, for us, through us, by us. Mold us. Shape us. Chisel us. What need to be fall off, let it fall off. Chisel us. Chisel. What needs to fall off in this service, let it fall off. 
And it shall come to pass in that day that his body will be lifted away from my shoulder, his yoke from my neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed. Let no yoke go back. Nobody is going home with every yoke of bondage. Nobody is going home with every yoke of sickness. Nobody is going back home the same way they came. We break every yoke of stagnation. We break every yoke of lack of progress. We break every satanic yoke. And now we release you into the fullness of your destiny. Thank you, my father. That which you have given to me, now I have given to your people. Holy Spirit, move. And bring us, bring the best out of us. And make us a better version of who we are. Thank you for hearing me. I give you praise and I bless you. In Jesus' victorious, matchless name, we have prayed. Did you receive it? Did you receive it? Give it up to him if you got something. Give it up to him. To bring the service to a close, please receive with me. Sir King Yakim Pastor Barn, Pastor Philemon Yelem as he takes the tithes and the offering. Bless him as he comes. Clap your hands once more. That word by saying that I'm happy and delighted to be on that by you. You have really impacted my life greatly. So, this morning I shall be your Barnabas. I shall be encouraging you because we are at a crossroad now, a very difficult moment in our lives. The environment is hot and the heat equally transcends up to our pockets. So, like Pastor said earlier, consistency begets power. No matter how small it is, just continually give, and before you know, you will get used to it. Uh, that's my personal experience and testimony. I've gotten to a point that no matter how small it is, I still give, because it's now a part of me and it's part of my character. So that consistency really big at power. So if you have your tight, I'd like to encourage you to stand. For those who have made their tithe available during the week, you can equally stand. And the account number is shown on the screen. You can equally use that account number to make your transfers for those who do not have the physical uh, resources available. So do I have people making tithes available today? If you are here, please can you stand up so that we can join hands and pray together as we partake in this kingdom practice. Okay, let's be in prayer as we pray for our tithe. Father, we thank you and praise you for treating us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom that you prepared for us. Thank you that this is a kingdom of mercy, joy, peace, and abundance. We bring our tithe now to you, Lord Jesus. It is the first fruit of what you have given to us, and we plant it in your kingdom as a seed of blessing, expecting the rich of heaven to multiply to us in return. In Jesus' name we are praying. So for the rest of us, if you have your offering, you have your offering envelope, you can put your offerings in it, speak to your offering, and when you are through doing that, you can pass it to those who are privileged that are seated in the central aisle so that we can equally pray for our offerings. If you have all done that, I want to urge you to pass your offering to those who are seated on the central aisle as the ushers who guide us in receiving the tithes and offering.
Ushers, please, you can assist in that. So before we take the benediction and our faith of our confession of faith, I'd like to use this opportunity to welcome those of us who are worshiping with us for the very first time. If you are one of such that God has ordered your footstep, it is not by chance or happenstance or accident. I sincerely believe that God brought you today to fellowship with us, to join hands with us. If you are one of such, please can you identify by raising your hands so that the church will see you, welcome you, those who are seated close to you, and give you a hand of fellowship or even a hug. Any of such people here, please can you stand up and see two persons behind? Can you stand up so that the church will see you? Those who are seated nearby, can you give them a hug? Tell them that we love them and we want them to be part of us. So this is how for drunk. Best place. If you turn behind, you will see uh, some beautiful ladies carrying a flag. They are welcoming you. They will take you to a room where you will be treated to a light refreshment and they will talk to you based on our core values and our mission and what we truly represent. I'm praying and hoping that we'll see you next time as the Lord tarries. Thank you very much for coming. You can follow the ushers, please. Thank you. Can we all be upstanding while as we share the benediction and our confession of faith? I'd like to start with the, our confession of faith. You repeat after me. Afterwards, we will now share the benediction together. So please, you repeat after me. God is my source. God is my source. Say it loudly. God is my source. God is my, source. my job is not my source. My enterprise is not my source. My, is not my source. my intellect is not my source. I therefore decide, decree, and declare. I therefore decide, decree, and declare. I am a kingdom provider. I am a kingdom provider. Say it as you mean it. I am a kingdom provider. I am a kingdom provider. I am a kingdom provider. Lastly, I am a kingdom provider. Because my God supplies all of my needs. According to his riches in glory. The blessings of the firstborn is upon me. The blessing of prosperity. Power and protection is my portion. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The benediction. Now may the God of peace who brought up our, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, Walking in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory With exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever The Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Do have a wonderful day and a great week ahead. Thank you.